Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm in the Transall C-160, which is a cargo plane. It is a freeware uh, version of it. And it looks like this on the outside. And I'm flying from Aurora State Airport in Oregon, which is where I made an emergency landing in the previous flight because the P-51 caught fire. And we are headed to Eureka in California. And this is a somewhat longer flight than I originally intended with this plane. Uh, I was going to go from Eugene to Eureka. But here we are, and yeah, we'll try this out. Uh, you almost got me flying uh, F-117 on this leg, but the, the freeware F-117 that I was trying out, I test flew, well, it wasn't a very long test flight. It has center of mass issues and I couldn't figure out where to tweak it to keep it balanced so we're gonna hold off on that until I look on the forums or find some solution but uh, for now we will fly this one hopefully this is gonna be more stable and we are continuing with the Apollo 13 audio already in progress so here we go okay throttle up maybe a little bit of flaps I don't know how, I, I can't imagine it needs that long a runway, but... Okay, uh, Fido's hustling here, uh, we'll try to get it right up to you, stand by. Okay, yep. Yeah. Off we go. Yeah, uh, by default, the F-117 basically, right when you pull up to take off from the runway, decided to do a backflip, so that was not good. I tried moving the center of mass forward because backflips are usually what happens when the center of mass is too far back, but it tended to be very wobbly. It uh, did unexpected pitches up and pitches down, so... Which, you know, maybe a fly-by-wire system would compensate for, but I did not have that kind of compensation available to me. Okay, so we'll fly over Salem first and then head towards the coast. Okay, P-30 maneuver pad on the dips. Purpose is mid-course 5. Down 33. 1-0-5. Three zero. Zero 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 zero. Now an eighty one is NA. HA is NA. Perigee plus zero zero one nine or eight. Zero 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 seven eight. Zero one five. The rest is NA. Shut down the engine at one second prior to the end of burn time. Shut down at 14 seconds manually. Ullage is four jets for 10 seconds. 10% 10 throttle. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Jack, we got a dip uh, mid course five. Down 33, 105-30-0000. Down 81, in slash A. HA, in slash A. Plus, 0, 0, 1, nine, or 8. 0, 0, 0, 7, 8. Bird time, 0, 1, 5. The rest of the pad, in slash A. Shut down, manually. I don't think it's necessary seconds. to get too far right, up. Four jets for 10 seconds. The entire burn is at 10 percent throttle. Okay, Fred, I want to verify that your Delta VR is 00078. Okay, I read you back, uh, 00078. Okay, good read back, you got it.
the Capcom on that call was uh, Jack Lausma. We passed up the pad for this mid-course correction. The time when 105 hours, 30 minutes elapsed. Delta velocity, uh, 7.8 feet per second. A burn time of 15 seconds with the notation to shut down the engine manually at 14 seconds. We're targeting for a, a perigee after this burn, 19.8 nautical miles versus uh, present uh, perigee of 87 nautical miles. And at 104 hours, 37 minutes, Apollo 13's distance from Earth is 153,971 nautical miles. Velocity, 4,421 feet per second. Okay, let me double check what the max speed for this is. Entry data that goes with the pad I just read up. It's five oh, items. that's let the wrong thing. It's on a maneuver pad. Okay, I'll, uh, 319 to miles an hour, exactly which is... 277 knots. So, okay. The city in front of us should Go be ahead. Salem. It is. Okay, uh, it's NA all the way down to noun 61. Your latitude is minus 2, 1. Hold on a minute, hold on. You mean the... Hold on, Jack. I need the other pad book. That's CSM pad. That's firm. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay, now I'm 61. Latitude minus 2167. Minus 16537. 11631. 36292. 142410202. Read back. Okay, now 61, uh, minus 2167, minus 16537, 11631, 362, or 2, 142-4102. Good read back. This Apollo Control at 104 hours, 41 minutes. The splash coordinates for which this burn is targeted are 21.67 degrees south, 165.37 So down west. there's McNary Field. Okay, Fred, we're getting it now. Uh, here's been Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Good, do you have readouts on our quad tap to know when we can start? We're taking a time hack. We'd just like a verification with you. Roger, your quad temps look good from here. I don't think these ahead. dials are mostly operant. 
At least the fuel flow gauge. Uh, okay, it is. That is working. How about if, how about if you do uh, fuel attack. pressure? Didn't seem to move at all though. Negative on my last red. To me, that's all right. Okay, uh, Jack, how do you read now? Go ahead, Aquarius. Oh, okay, I thought you called, Jack. Uh, we're uh, maneuvering around here to fish for the uh, earth. And uh, Houston Aquarius, how's the uh, ASA uh, package template now? Okay, Fred, the uh, ASA package stamp is looking good. It's around 98 degrees, and uh, we'd like to see it go up about 15 to 20 degrees. Okay, why don't you give me the word uh, before I proceed with the eggs. Uh, we really don't need it uh, right this instant. Roger, we'll be watching it. Aquarius Houston, the ASA package temperature is up now, so you can uh, activate the eggs. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, Jack, so we can uh, make sure and get our timer set here. Um, I wonder if when you're, uh, you've got about 48 uh, minutes to the burn, which should be coming up pretty quick. You give us a hack uh, so we can see our event timer at 12. Roger, Fred. I uh, understand you want to mark at uh, 12 minutes prior to the burn. Is that affirmed? Roger. We uh, we think we got it set now. We just wanted to check it. If we don't, then uh, I'll get it to 13, and you can... Uh, Give me another hack at 40, uh, 47 to go. Okay, we've got 33 to go. Mark. Uh, my mistake, it was 33. Right on. Roger, uh, it was... Well, we've got a weird, we messed up mark, patch right? down there. This is the city of Albany, Oregon, and apparently there is a mystery patch. Help. Okay, uh, you got about 10503 uh, GT now uh, down there? That's affirmative, Fred. Uh, going through uh, 105.03.45. Mark. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Jack, give me the next uh, number you want me to set then, and I'll uh, take another hack here. Roger, uh, you're counting up, right? Roger. Okay, Fred, on my mark, be 35 minutes to the burn. Stay by. The vertical stabilizer looks odd to me, but taking a look at photos of the C-160, that's how Maybe it looks. Fred, let's get her on the next minute. Okay. Just has a really odd vertical stabilizer. I mean, not the oddest, okay, obviously. Okay, on my mark, it's going to be 24 minutes to the burn, and you will be reading 36. Stand by. Mark. It's a bit blocky. Okay, we got it cranked up.
This is Apollo Control at 105 hours, 8 minutes. Following this burn, passive thermal control will be reestablished, and the command module pilot, Jack Swigert, and the lunar module pilot, Fred Hayes, will begin a six-hour rest period. This is Apollo Control. We will wait until the uh, burst disk on the uh, supercritical helium goes before reestablishing uh, passive thermal control, however. Apollo 13 now 152,604 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 4,450 feet per second. Jim? I hope the guys in the back room who thought they'd separate knew what they're saying. And uh, I'm looking through the AOT there, Jack, and the uh, sun's right at the top, and it's about uh, maybe two degrees to the right of the cursor, so that uh, looks real good. Roger, good going. Okay, Aquarius, uh, attitude looks good here, and uh, your choice when you want to start the burn. Uh, we're kind of down, aren't we, or do you want us to start any time? Your choice. <laughs> your choice. I, I, didn't, I don't know if they normally it's got choices. It's not time critical, Jim. And uh, Houston, uh, we uh, reset our clock and uh, we'll be making the burn and uh, about, uh, I'll give you a hack here, it's uh, two minutes to go. Roger, Fred, and uh, let us know when you're going to Hollage, will you? Okay. Two minutes, we got it. Aquarius Houston, uh, check engine gimbal off, please. It's verified uh, off. And uh, mark it, one minute. Roger, Fred. Engine arm to descent. College. Ignition. Thrust looks good. Okay. Shut down. At 470. Roger, we copy 7.4. Roger, 7.4, and I had about uh, two tenths on, I guess, when we started. Roger, we verify that. Well, that city in front of us is Eugene. Finally. <laughs> we were supposed okay, to have landed there last time. 7.6. Okay, you want uh, plus X now to get uh, 7.6, is that correct? That's affirmative. Okay, you're looking at it, Houston. Okay, looks good. Nice work. Let's hope it was.
Okay, Grace, uh, we're ready to follow you through on uh, setting up PTC and power down. Your choice. Okay, uh, okay, we're pressing into uh, getting PTC established right now. This is Apollo Control at 105 hours, 23 minutes. That trimming was done with the reaction control system. Burn looked good. Fido will want to get some tracking now uh, and look at that for a while before he can tell precisely what was achieved. Decision has been made to go ahead and reestablish uh, passive thermal control prior to the uh, supercritical helium tank venting. There's enough uncertainty into the time when that will vent now that uh, we're going to go ahead and establish the PTC. We can expect uh, venting. Uh, so yeah, city of Eugene. Anytime. Interesting layout, definite uh, sort of two hours probably. central business district there. We'll continue to stand by for live air ground transmissions. Aquarius Houston, uh, we'd like to change the number of yaw pulses we gave you before is 21. We'd like to reduce that to 12. 12 pulses, yaw right. And uh, that'll take you about three seconds to get them in if you don't want to count them. Okay, we'll make it 12 uh, versus uh, 21. Okay, Houston, I'm just about there now, and as soon as I get 90, we'll start damping rates. Roger, Aquarius. This is Apollo Control, Jim Lovell setting up the passive thermal control now. We're reading a pressure in the supercritical helium tank of 1,834 pounds per square inch. The burst disk range is 1,881 to 1,970 pounds per square inch. The latest prediction uh, is that we'll reach the uh, the lower limit, the burst limit, the lower burst limit, 1881, at uh, in about an hour and a half. We're predicting uh, a rise rate of, in the pressure of 33 uh, pounds per square inch per hour right now. Okay, here's what I'm trying to damp rates now. We're at uh, the proper roll attitude and pitch. Roger, Aquarius. Working a little better this time. Are you copying uh, any attitudes down there, Reed, et cetera? Okay, Aquarius, we're seeing some extremely uh, low rates at this time, uh, really below our capability to measure them. Roger. This is Apollo Control at 105 hours, 35 minutes. The flight dynamics officer expects a fairly reasonable estimate of the trajectory in approximately two hours.
drifting in a clockwise uh, direction. And uh, I'm about all set now to put in uh, my 12 clicks to the right. Roger, Jim, we're ready to look at it with you. This is Apollo Control at 105 hours, 37 minutes. The ignition time of that mid-course burn was 105 hours, 18 minutes, 32 seconds. The total duration of both the descent propulsion system and the trim burn was 15.4 seconds. We are right next to uh, Interstate so 5, by the way, right now. Was 7 but uh, I do plan to deviate away from it since our destination is not on Interstate 5. So, I sort of see it go off to the left there. But I'm going to head off to the right here. That's affirmative, Fred. We're ready to uh, press on with the power down. I've got uh, two changes for you. Step one of the emergency power down on uh, page power dash five. Over. Go ahead. Okay, I'll leave your power amplifier switch and primary device off and uh, put your ranging switch to range device off reset. Okay, we're in uh, prime and a power amp and uh, ranging on uh, ranging. Affirmative. Okay, I'm going to pull uh, out here. Okay, configure CBs. There you go. Uh, Aquarius Houston, uh, hold off one and a power down, please. Okay, we'll hold up. And uh, we're looking at a sheet pressure incidentally of about 1830 uh, now. Roger, uh, we concur with that. And looks like you got a little pitch rate going here. Do you uh, copy the same? Just hold off on it one, uh, Jim. We'd like to take a look at it. Okay. Aquarius, we'll need high bit rate, please. Uh, flashlight, Jack. Jack, flashlight over here a minute. Aquarius, we need the uh, power amplifier back and high bit rate, please. We're headed roughly to Coos Bay. Got a couple in the roll pretty soon. No, I haven't uh, focused on this view of the plane so far. I was interested in using the F-117 because it's now a longer flight and I would have preferred to use something a little bit faster, but well, that didn't pan out, so. Oh, 
Oh, I think we can see the ocean there. Roger, Jim, and uh, we'd like you to uh, give us your idea of how the PTC looks. Uh, we're not sure we're seeing what we ought to hear. Okay, Jim, uh, with that info, we'll go on the PTC and let's proceed with the power down. Okay, we'll proceed with the uh, PTC and uh, proceed with the power down. I guess if we have to, we can reestablish PTC at a later date. So we can see Kuspe to the forward right there. Aquarius Houston, uh, you're cleared to open the power amplifier circuit breaker and go to low bit rate, leaving the power amp switch in primary. Okay, I'll pull the uh, prime uh, SBS. Train sure looking green around here.
This is Apollo Control at 106 hours, two minutes. We're in the midst of, midst of a uh, shift changeover here in Mission Control at this time. Uh, flight Director Melton Wendler and the uh, Maroon team of flight controllers replacing Flight Director Jerry Griffin and the Gold team. Our capsule communicator uh, on this shift will be astronaut Jack Lausma. One of our large uh, LAM status boards here in Mission Control uh, would indicate that uh, the power down of the LEM is uh, completed at this time. Uh, during the burn, the power levels on the LEM were running around 25 amps. We're now showing uh, the power somewhere between 10 and uh, 12 amps. Uh, the target level during the power down is to keep it to at least 14 amps, so we're well below uh, the uh, minimum target and uh, in very good shape on LEM power at this time. Flight Director Windler at this time is reviewing uh, the status with each of his flight controllers. And uh, at the present time, Apollo 13 is 150,302 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 4,498 feet per second. Uh, there will be a change of shift briefing. We do not have a time at uh, the moment. We'll pass that along to you as soon as it is available. At 106 hours, three minutes, this is Mission Control Houston. Houston Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. About how far out are we now, Jack? Okay, Aquarius, uh, you're 150,000 miles, and you're coming in at uh, 4,500 feet a second. That's uh, from the Earth. Okay, we're at 100. Yeah. 150K, 2,500 feet a second. Uh, this is Apollo Control. Our LEM control officer reports that... How much uh, TTCA control did you have to do during the burn? Uh, how much, uh, what was that, Jack? How much control with the TTCA did you have to do during the burn? Uh, I wouldn't notice in the gym too much. I'd say I put in maybe about uh, six or seven inputs. I don't think it ever got off more than um, a couple of needle lifts. Roger, Fred. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Now this is Apollo Control. Uh, flight Director Milton Wendler has uh, completed checking the status with each of his flight controllers at this time. And uh, the general tenor all the way around was that uh, we're in very good shape at the present time. Uh, a couple of the significant items discussed. Uh, the surgeon reported that uh, uh, the lithium hydroxide, the makeshift lithium hydroxide canister, appears to be doing an excellent job. We're pres presently reading uh, a carbon dioxide level of 1.2 uh, millimeters of mercury. The uh, LAM Telecom uh, reported that they're beginning to see the effects of the engine burn uh, heat soak back into the uh, helium tank and uh, uh, related rise in pressure in the helium, which would indicate that the burst disk may go a bit earlier than uh, originally predicted, although the uh, heat soak back had been expected. Uh, the uh, plot that we have on the pressure rise in the helium tank would indicate the burst disk uh, going sometime between 107 and 108 hours ground elapsed time. The uh, range on the burst disk is uh, 
1,881 pounds per square inch to 1,970 pounds per square inch, and somewhere between this pressure range, we would expect the uh, burst disk uh, to go, relieving the pressure on the uh, supercritical helium tank. The flight dynamics officer reported that uh, when we get the burst disk rupture, uh, they will be observing what they call Doppler shift to see what effect the venting from the helium tank has on the trajectory. Uh, if there is no no effect on the trajectory, uh, we would expect to have a preliminary data on the effects of the mid-course correction within about two hours. That would be about two hours after the burst disk ruptures. Uh, if, on the other hand, there is some change in velocity as a result of the burst disk rupture, uh, the flight, dy flight dynamics officer said that it would be at least five hours before we had uh, a preliminary uh, estimate on the trajectory, the new trajectory. We've noted that the communications has gotten uh, somewhat noisier. Uh, this is related to the power down of the lunar module. One of the items that is turned off in the power down is the communications power amplifier. Uh, this increases the noise uh, with respect to the signal and uh, uh, we, we do expect uh, the communications to remain more or less uh, noisier than they have been. Uh, this condition will turn it back on. Uh, vary as the spacecraft attitude changes and as the position of the antennas changes with respect to the tracking antennas on Earth. I was liking the nice clear audio. The flight plan at this time calls for the command module pilot Jack Swigert and the lunar module pilot Fred Hayes to get about six hours of rest. Uh, Jim Lovell will stay on the watch in the lunar module. At 106 hours, 16 minutes, Apollo 13 is 149,706 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,509 feet per second. And the clock in mission control counting down to entry shows that we have 36 hours, 24 minutes until Earth entry. This is Apollo control at 106 hours, 17 minutes. We're about halfway into this flight, by the way. Again, a little bit longer than originally planned. I usually plan for about an hour. Aquarius Houston, how do you read? I read your loud, clear, Jack. Whoa, okay, Jack, uh, uh, what's your status? you seem to have who's hit a gust here. And, uh, who's working? Well, right now, uh, we're all three kind of working. Uh, do you have any recommendations? Well, yeah, you seem to be still like tilting to right that, for uh, some reason. You and Fred ought to get some sleep, and uh, that you ought to eat in about six hours. And, uh, that the skipper ought to go to bed about uh, 113 hours. Uh, we are going down and slowing down. Got some other information. Uh, we shouldn't have some good. Uh, no let me see in the cockpit what's going on hours. here. Looked like to us that the burn was real good, however, and uh, well, fuel flow we're taking a close look at it, and we'll get back with you on that. It's nominal. About two hours from now. Another thing that we're expecting to have happen. Uh, well, let's that, head down. Uh, oil pressure is fine, fuel pressure is fine, the oil temperature is fine, if those dials are correct. Hours are in about 25 minutes. Hmm. And the uh, latest probable time at, uh, is at 110 hours. And this is uh, supposed to be a non proposal Well, event. I mean, we're still... I've hear, already done a lot of aileron so. trim, and we're still turning to the right. Okay, that's, Maybe there's uh, some that's weird a, thermal uh, thing going on we here. And I'll relay all the other information you gave me. Okay, and if the uh, sheet tank does burst during this time frame uh, before we get trajectory info, why well, that will uh, delay our trajectory info somewhat. Your consumables, your water is now good uh, through 152 hours. We're just passing by Port uh, Oxford. Wait, That's wait Let me copy some of this down. sort of that okay. cape right there. Orford, not Oxford, Orford. Okay, uh, 
We are about 130 miles away from Eureka. Yeah, it's okay, still uh, rolling to the right. Still have, uh, more water than you need. And still slowing down and, despite uh, going down. One thing we'd like you to do is to, uh, when you're going to sleep up there in a the command module, uh, take a look through the optics and see if you can see any stars. This is a turboprop. Okay, Jack, I will do. Uh, Kim and I were able to spot uh, constellations uh, from the windows of the lamp uh, when, it, when there's no venting taking place. Uh, could you give me some time on these consumables, what you're predicting they're good for? We started to give you some times. Uh, we think we think we might be able to give you some better ones uh, pretty soon. But it looks like your water is good through 154 hours, and uh, you got toxin uh, O2 through 272 hours. Still need It's like one of the engines has gone messed up. But I don't see anything to tell me that. Engine gas temp is fine. That's down here. Okay, N1s good, good, good. are balanced. Fuel flow's balanced. Oh, but we don't have as much power as we did before, just a little while ago. Drop off and, uh, at the time delta will uh, go up to 160, 165 hours quite shortly. Another thing uh, we're interested in is uh, oh. what's your status on rest and medication? Okay, uh, none of us I know have had any medication and uh, right now as far as uh, rest, uh, I suppose we're no tighter than uh, normally in this situation. Uh, I'm going to relay the work sleep cycle. Well. Stall speed is a hundred knots, okay, so uh, don't to look the we're still flyable right now. I've got the throttle all the way up now. I had throttle down a little bit because we didn't need all of the thrust. Oh, I missed whatever the laugh was for. Again, you sort of saw how fast we were traveling before, and I'm at full throttle now. We were actually only at about maybe 85% before. Interesting. Okay, thank you. If you can think of it, uh, when the time comes up, when uh, you're not venting, uh, how about remembering to take a look through them and give us a word? Okay, we'll do.
Go ahead, over. This is Apollo Control at 106 hours, 45 minutes. The, uh, Did you call? Uh, yes, Jack. I just got a question. Uh, how long uh, are you predicting the, uh, our, the command module LIOH canisters to last in here? Okay, Jack, uh, we've got 14 cartridges that'll last 157 hours, uh, plus we've got the limb primary cartridge for 23 hours, and we've got two plus cartridges, seven hours apiece. Okay, I was just curious as to how much time we got out of these two cartridges. Oh, stand by one, I'll get a prediction on that, and uh, by the way, I hope you're keeping track of the ones you've used and the ones you're not. Yeah, right now uh, we have uh, number seven and eight uh, in the uh, uh, limb here. Roger. They were two brand new fresh ones. This is Apollo Control. Got an um, airport here. The participants for the change of shift press briefing are leaving mission control now. We estimate that the Trying briefing to check will the begin map on in it. about 10 minutes in the uh, MSC main auditorium in the news center. Uh, Gold Beach Municipal Airport. While we're waiting so, for this is Gold Beach. the uh, information which uh, Jack Swigert requested on the expected lifetime of the two current lithium hydroxide canisters, we might uh, recap some of the conversations between Swigert and uh, Capcom Jack Lausma. Uh, Jack Swigert reported the crew had taken no medication and uh, he said that uh, as far as rest goes they're uh, no more tired than normally in this situation. He said they uh, plan to switch to a rest cycle as indicated in the flight plan uh, as soon as it's convenient. We passed up a uh, consumable status to the crew. Also, the status on the supercritical helium tank burst disk. Uh, we expect that we'll be uh, within the range where the disk uh, could rupture uh, within a matter of minutes. We're presently showing the uh, supercritical helium tank pressure at 1,874 pounds per square inch. Uh, we'll hit the lower limit of uh, uh, 1,881 pounds per square inch uh, shortly. And we'll be advising the crew when that level is reached. And Jack Lausma advised them that uh, they very likely will hear the disc rupture and may see something from the limb at the time it ruptures. Various Houston, uh, in regards to the uh, CO2 canisters, by the way, the PCO2 is reading uh, 1.6 down here now. We expect that uh, we can get six more hours out of the two canisters that we have there, six hours at least. However, at uh, 112 hours, when we've got uh, several people up, we're going to rig up two more. And we have a new simplified procedure for doing this. However, in the meantime, should we need to have a canister change, we plan to switch to the LEM primary canister. Over. Okay, copy that, Jack. And Aquarius, uh, how's your PTC holding up? We got a little bit off, Jack. The, uh, it uh, starts uh, high in the LMP window and uh, goes uh, low in the CDR window. So 
we got a little bit of a wobble uh, on, of course, the command module venting doesn't help either. Okay, thank you, Jack. I copied that. Aquarius Houston, we'd like to get a little better idea of how PTC is going, so uh, what we'd like you to do is what we did last time, that is to uh, give us a reading on the uh, center of the Earth and the center of the moon on the uh, on the LPD. Just a reminder that PTC is the passive thermal control, which is the barbecue roll that they do to make sure that heating is evened out around the spacecraft. Okay, but when it goes by the uh, plane of the LPD, tell us where it was, okay? LPD is just markings on the window. I think uh, those were originally meant to help landing, but in this case they're using it to see this is their orientation hours, 11 minutes. during the barbecue roll. Our uh, displays based on telemetry information from the spacecraft currently show that uh, we have a pressure in the supercritical helium tank of about 1800 89 pounds per square inch. Uh, this is within the range where the uh, burst disc on the tank could rupture. Uh, the, the range is roughly between 1,881 pounds per square inch and uh, 1,970 pounds per square inch. Uh, during the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, there's been a uh, huddle around the flight director's console. Uh, the subject of the discussion is uh, what procedure we use if the burst disc does not rupture, as expected. Uh, the pressure in the tank uh, should not go above about 2,000 pounds per square inch. If the burst disc uh, does not rupture, uh, we would need to use an alternative uh, method of depressurizing the tank. Uh, these alternatives involve either uh, depressurizing by venting all at once or by venting in, in stages a little at a time, and uh, a decision has not been made at this time on uh, how the tank would be vented in the event that it is necessary, uh, but those are the options that, uh, uh, that we have as it appears right now. There's the town of Brookings and this Brookings Airport here, and also heard, uh, this is the last White town before California. position of the Earth and uh, Moon and Sun as the uh, spacecraft uh, rotates in the passive thermal control mode and as, as these uh, uh, bodies come into view through the windows. Uh, we've asked him to give a uh, relative position of the Earth and Moon on the landing point designator, the grid on the LEM window, which is calibrated and uh, will give us uh, a bit more precise information on how the spacecraft is maintaining its passive thermal control attitude. At the present time, uh, we show Apollo 13 to be 147,186 nautical miles from the Earth. I just passed the Earth and came into view at the uh, top left-hand corner of the LMP's window, 
and was going down. However, when it passed, uh, it wasn't as high up as the last pass. It did pass in the view of the CDR's window, but just too high up to get an LPD reading. Roger, understand it uh, went high in both windows then. Yeah, last time it wasn't even visible in the CDR's window. This time uh, it was visible, but if you squat it down, but too high up to get an LPD reading. Okay, Jack, that's good, thank you. Okay, we have now crossed into California. You can actually see the, the photo scenery border there, unfortunately. Between Oregon and California. There's a definite line there. Supercritical helium tank of 1,897 pounds per square inch. Our LEM control. We should be about 80 miles away from that, from, your, uh, from Eureka. Jeez. The the tank and that's not nautical miles. That's we'll miles, miles. The next 15 minutes or so. At that time, our indication in mission control that uh, the disk is ruptured would be a drop in uh, the tank pressure to zero. presently show a uh, current on the uh, spacecraft uh, electrical power system of uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 amps. Uh, this is well below the uh, minimum that we'd like to stay under. Uh, we'd like to keep it uh, down to at least 14 amps and uh, uh, since the spacecraft has been powered down we've been well below that figure. Okay, we are approaching Crescent City. Hey, Houston, Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Okay, uh, this path, the, uh, Looks like... I don't know if there's supposed to be trees in the middle of Lake Earl, but we've got trees in the middle of Lake Earl here. That's probably not right. Okay, minus one five on the moon, and uh, sounds like it's set up pretty well. Definitely a lot of trees on the water. Everybody's happy with it down there? Aquarius, it's a little too early to tell uh, exactly how the PTC is going. We'd like to get a few more points, so keep reading them off. And uh, we're still looking for that uh, super crit to go anytime. Okay. Houston Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. The uh, Earth uh, was just slightly high at the LMP window and uh, crossed the 14 degree LPD line. Okay, Skipper, 14 degrees, thank you. This is Apollo Control at 107 hours, uh, 59 minutes. Uh, that report on the uh, relative positions of the uh, 
Earth and Moon okay, through so the Crescent uh, City. windows coming from Jim Lovell. That's the first time we've heard from Lovell uh, recently. Uh, check with the flight surgeon. Uh, we, as far as we know at this time, all three crewmen are still up. However, the fact that uh, Lovell is now on watch uh, might indicate that Jack Swigert and uh, Fred Hayes are uh, planning to begin a rest period. In mission control, uh, Flight Director Milt Wendler has been discussing the uh, situation with the supercritical helium tank and what options we've got. If the uh, burst disk does not uh, rupture as it's expected, it will. And as we mentioned before, at that time, it appeared the options were either to vent the uh, supercritic or vent the uh, pressure from the supercritical helium tank uh, in a series of small vents, or to vent it all at once. Uh, after looking at the situation, it's been decided that uh, the procedure, should it be necessary, uh, to relieve the pressure by venting, uh, would be to vent it all at once. In this event, the uh, it is felt that. Uh, the fuel in the fuel heat exchanger would be frozen, and uh, we would not be able to thaw it out again. This would render the descent propulsion system unusable for uh, further further maneuvers. However, we have uh, adequate consumables in the uh, LAM ascent stage, and adequate uh, propulsion in the ascent stage. It's also felt that uh, if a subsequent mid-course was needed, uh, probably closer into the uh, Earth entry, we would be able to uh, perform this mid-course using the ascent propulsion stage of the lunar module. The present uh, pressure on the supercritical helium tank, as read from telemetry data here in Mission Control, is 1,913 pounds per square inch. Uh, the uh, rise rate has slowed down somewhat. Uh, the uh, Recapping again, the uh, predicted range for the burst disk rupture is between 1,881 pounds per square inch and 1,970 pounds per square inch. Uh, we wouldn't begin to get concerned about the pressures on the supercritical helium tank until it got up around 2,000 pounds per square inch. And uh, the LEM control officer anticipates that we would not get up around the 2,000 pounds per square inch in the event the burst disk does not rupture until about 114 or 115 hours ground elapsed time. The experience that we've had with ground tests uh, on the supercritical helium burst disk indicates that it uh, uh, should be rupturing around the pressure we've got now uh, in the low 1900s and we're continuing to watch that. The uh, LEM power is continuing to run as it has since power down uh, between 10 and 12 amps, and will look very good in that respect. There's also been no change in the status of any of the other consumables aboard the spacecraft. They all continue to look, uh, look quite good at this time. Apollo 13 is presently 144,958 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed now of 4,613 feet per second. And we're now 34 hours, 37 minutes until Earth entry. At 108 hours, 4 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Oh, I had muted myself because of noise outside. This is the Klamath River here. Houston, Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. And we should be flying over a lot of redwood trees, which uh, 
probably should look taller, I would think. Okay, Jim, we got an earth one by at a minus eight degrees. On a basis of the data, That's right. on the basis of the data we have so far, your uh, entry angle is five point nine nine. The uh, block data we gave you on the pad for a no com mid core seven last night is no longer valid because we made this mid course. Discussing that uh, now, Jim, and uh, looks like we're going to wait on the track. And uh, for the time being, uh, since you're in the corridor, why there's no need to uh, pass it up. But uh, we're going to keep looking at the track, and then we'll probably come up with one. I think this is the Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. Say again, Jim. I said you thought you were going to sleep through all your watch. Well, you keep waking me up. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's uh, one thing. Obviously, normally the Apollo missions had all the crew members sleep at once, which uh, makes things quieter for them, makes it easier to sleep. This is Apollo control. But this Apollo mission, they slept in after. shifts, so the, the Capcom, Capsu communicator, who is supposed a, to be Earth in charge the during the sleep correction. shifts, is suddenly uh, much more active. Nine hours, 30 minutes, or a little over uh, 37 minutes from now. Uh, the burn was targeted to uh, give the spacecraft uh, a flight path angle of minus 6.52 degrees at entry interface. Uh, we won't have a uh, confirmation of this, of course, until uh, the flight dynamics officer is able to complete the tracking and a compilation of data uh, to come up with some preliminary numbers. But the, uh, the targeted value of that uh, mid-course was to give us a flight path angle of uh, minus 6.52 degrees. Uh, the entry corridor, the, uh, which is the width of uh, flight path angle uh, that we feel we can withstand is about minus 5.25 degrees to about minus 7.4 degrees uh, of flight path angle. We're still watching the supercritical helium pressure aboard the LEM uh, descent stage increase gradually. Uh, the pressure is now reading 1,937 pounds per square inch. 
I would like to uh, cover again the procedures which we mentioned have been worked out in the event that the burst disc does not rupture, as it is expected to do. Uh, the burst disc, of course, is in there to relieve pressure on the tank, on the uh, uh, supercritical helium tank. When the pressure gets above uh, certain specified limits, the disc is designed to rupture uh, between 1,881 pounds per square inch and 1,970 pounds per square inch. Uh, in the event the uh, disc does not rupture, uh, Flight Director Milton Wendler and his flight controllers have worked out a uh, procedure that would be followed to relieve the pressure uh, on the tank. And uh, we see the pressure dropping at this time. The control officer uh, reports that the burst disc uh, has ruptured. We just, uh, as we were making this announcement, anything? Well, that saves them from the alternate plans if it didn't rupture. Yeah, exactly. Okay, she's going down through 600 now. That's the pressure that is being relieved. I think we're probably going to have to reestablish PCC. Yeah, we got a pretty fast uh, yard to this, Jack. Yeah, we're going to have to ask one of your plans. We're thinking about it right now. Did you say it yawed some? Yeah, I was in a right yaw, and now I'm in a left yaw. At a much faster rate than uh, the one you put in the PCV. Okay, Jim, uh, we're talking it over. Stand by. waiting for uh, conversation to resume between the Capcom and uh, Jim Lovell aboard Aquarius. Uh, we'll re-summarize the situation as we were talking about uh, the procedure that would be followed in the event the burst disc did not rupture. Uh, lo and behold, the disc ruptured. Uh, that occurred at a pressure of about uh, 1,937 pounds per square inch at uh, about 108 hours, 54 minutes, 40 seconds ground elapsed time. Uh, we saw the Okay, Jim, it's going through 125 pounds. Okay, we are approaching Eureka. That's and the bay up ahead, if you can see it. Your yaw. Is that affirmative? Uh, sure did, Let's Jack. see. Oh, actually, the airport is up here. Uh, it's not the. It's not past the city. It's this one, the one right to our left there. Cali, Redwood, Humboldt County, KACD. Okay, well, despite whatever weird occurrence occurred, we are here. Back and forth. Well, we will see more of Eureka on the next flight. Is uh, that what they call a non propulsive vent? <laughs> right, I'd hate to see a propulsive one. <laughs> Looks like it knocked them Enemy off boat. quite a bit. But it's going through 50 pounds. Non propulsive so, uh, just means that the, it's not supposed to push them. 
in the direction of motion. And also, I don't think it was supposed to go when the spacecrafts were coupled together, but I don't know. Well, I think that's Highway 101 below us. Pretty busy, as it ought to be. You say you think it uh, might have given you some left roll as opposed to opposite yaw. Sure is losing speed very quickly, huh? Well, let me get into the cockpit. Oop. Okay, well, we'd kind of like to uh, watch it, see what happens. Nope, I don't need to do that right now. Uh, however, we'll need some inputs from you on that. Well, we're in no, uh, no trouble up here as far as, uh, as, far as the uh, uh, yaw goes. Everything's fine. It's faster than we had set up before. We have a little bit of flaps. Might as well drop the gear down while we still can. <laughs> Just in case something else goes wrong. I mean, right now I'm at full throttle here. So, you know, it's acting weird, I'll say that. We don't see any thermal problems as a result of uh, this change. If we see some communications problems, we may have to uh, do something different, but uh, so far so good. And uh, we'd kind of like to hear from you on uh, LPD. Man, I have to tr do a lot of aileron trim here. A lot of aileron trim. Okay, well done. Hopefully I'll remember to check for failures once we land. Okay, but it'd be weird uh, for... The Earth just went through and an LPD that it'd be failure... That causes us to go slower. There's no indication being made of that. I think it might have been a flap problem. Because as I lower the flaps, it's really severe. Of course, the only other thing that uh, we'd be concerned about is uh, what change in your velocity this might have had or what delta V had imparted and uh, we'll have to uh, look at that for a while before we are able to determine it. Now uh, we've got landing gear. That's why, uh, important. To leave it the way it is. Okay, Jack. Uh, we're going to get a time on uh, a revolution here and uh, maybe that will help you out. Right. And uh, for your information, the uh, tank went at uh, 1,937. Right. Okay, Jack. Uh, the Earth went through again at 1.8 degrees on the LPD. Okay, Earth at 1.8. Thank you. Okay, and we didn't see the moon that time. Okay, Jack, the moon went through that time at 32 degrees on the LPD. Okay. 32, thanks. Oop. Okay, that wasn't the plane, that was the tape. Okay, Jack, uh, we, uh, we still need to trim more aileron trim. Lots more okay, aileron trim. Uh, I don't know if I have enough aileron yeah, trim actually. Okay. Uh, say again the time and the, uh, also the LPD number here in the background noise, Jack. Okay, okay, Jack. Uh, LPD that time. All right. Uh, is this a taxiway? It is a taxi. Uh, well, it's a runway. It is another taxiway over there. Okay, brakes off, please. The time before we didn't see it, and the time was three minutes and. 
Well, we are here in Eureka at our planned airport okay, uh, this time. Is that, uh, right uncomfortable for you? This seems like a dead end. Well, Arcata. Okay. Uh. Well, let's just park over here. Nobody else is using these spots. I'm sort of in reverse, though. I'm uh, opposite the what the hashes are asking for. Uh, we'll just go past. Aquarius, how about cycling the power temp monitor? Find out which battery it is, please. I don't think I can turn on to one of those, can I? Okay, Fred, I can hear you now. Say again, please. Okay, it's the same old, uh, same old one. Uh, the only light I Whoa. Is, uh, is on the back two. Oh, close enough. All right, we've parked. I don't don't even normally park. Okay, but okay. I want to pause there, and I want to check whether there's been any failures. Uh, well, I mean. Probably say something down there already. Hard over, no. Nope, it was just acting weird all on its own. Oh, the lab aids aren't gonna make any difference. Engines, failures, no. Nope. Apparently everything's all right, but it sure felt funny. Okay, well, uh, I think uh, I'm not gonna go through anything more. All right, so, well, we're here, and next time I am going to fly to San Francisco, I believe, and that will be with uh, Piper Cheyenne 2. So, look forward to that. Hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.